Hello, everyone! Welcome back! We are Sasha and the cat, and we are back at it again. Today, we have Jelena! Hey, everyone. We are so excited. They are a duo, which we're always fans of, but they are singers and songwriters. Yes. It's going to be super interesting. (laughs) We have Justina on top of me right here. And then then we have Elaine over there. (laughs) Somewhere Somewhere on the screen. Um, Yes, it's going to be a great time. Um, We're going to dive deep into how their lives are and how they, um, anything from songwriting details to just working together and um, maybe some secret performances too. Not so secret. Not so secret. You never know. Said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know. I mean, it's a surprise if it happens. It's not like, you know, they're sitting in front of anything, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we just kind of want to start off with, um, if you guys want to tell us a little bit about yourselves and how you guys um, formed Jelena. Um, I know there's um, interesting stories about how you write songs together. So go for it. Sure. <laughs> Anyone? Justina? Me? Me? You want to go for it, Justina? I'll, I'll go. Okay. Um, so my personal story is um, I've been writing songs for a really long time. Um, like I, when I was six or seven, I would just like write short stories and then I would sing them as if they were songs, but they were like very long stories. <laughs> And so um, cool. it's pretty cute. Um, I wrote a song about democracy. I think that was my first song. Diving in straight, young. Really like passionate <laughs> about America and um, progressed from there. And um, kind of, that's kind of just been my love for my whole life. It's gotten me through like a lot of hard shit. And um, then when I decided to not prioritize like teaching full time anymore, I found um this class from this woman named Kathy Heller and it was on music licensing so a class on how to get your music into tv shows films and ads Mm. I joined the class Elaine was in the class and I don't know there might have been like a little friend crush happening you know we were like you felt the pull there was definitely a pull for sure (laughs) and Elaine um She's, she told me she was working on a song and she sent me the lyrics that she had and um, I completed them. And then I feel like the rest was history. Like we just, it sort of built on from there. And I don't think we've ever co-written in real time. It's always just like, mm-hmm. we send each other pieces back and forth via text and then the other one completes it. But yeah, feel free to- That is so it. cool. <laughs> yeah, I is it difficult to write that way or- what about it's the like you music- guys are completing each other's poems. Like, that is so cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's like, I don't know. It's I, I totally have different songwriting processes with different people. And with, with Justina, like, I think there's just like a level of confidence. Um, for me anyway, there's like a level of confidence I have in her songwriting ability that I feel like comfortable just sending a chunk over. Um, whereas with another person, I might want to be in the same Zoom room as them just to like play something and see where they go with it. Cause it can be hard. Like if you send somebody something and they finish it with something that you're like really mm. not into, like it's, that's a, it's like not a super easy conversation. Um, like it's harder kind of to like be like, actually, can I take that thing back that I created and hey. pretend this never happened? Yeah. So there's like a certain amount of like trust that needs to be there in order you know for you to be like okay i'm willing to like release this to this other person and see what they come up with right um, interesting yeah. okay tell us your start too and then no and then we're we already see this we already have all the questions we're like okay so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i um i have been writing i mean i've been writing and performing since my early 20s i'm in my late 30s now so it's been a while i've done a bunch of touring um released like three full-length albums and then just this last couple years released like a ton of singles after joining that course with Justina um 
yeah, it was a great course. Met so many cool people. This um, is in LA, right? It was online. Oh yeah. We met online. We we're totally oh. like, yeah. You're like super buddies. millennial Gen Z right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Elaine doesn't live in LA. She's no. in the Bay area. In the Bay area. Okay. When did you guys meet? Like, was it during the pandemic or was it before? Right before. Like, so we, we met at this course that was like a six month course. And then that, that February, there was a conference in LA and we met at the conference and then it was March and then it was COVID. Wow. Right. That's good timing. <laughs> at least well, before. that hasn't stopped you with your text songwriting. So exactly. <laughs> yeah. it couldn't. We're pandemic proof. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's so interesting that you say that you have to um, kind of get along with it, like trust the person before you start um, co-writing with them. What are some of the things that you would be like, okay, I kind of get along with you because you're not going to be like, show me your past songs or I mean, maybe actually. Hell yeah, you are. You're, you're not going to be like, show me your past or, songs. I mean, you're... like, show me your past processes, you know? No, you're going to stop. You're going to stalk them on Spotify right. and be like, right. <laughs> yeah. what is this? Um, oh, yeah, there is definitely a fair share. My fair share of stalking for sure. <laughs> It's research. It's research. Yeah, I think at one point you like were like, "What's this like photo of something that was like seven years old?" And I was like, "Oh, so you've really been digging." <laughs> I go deep. What is this inspiration here? <laughs> like, should I really invest in this? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I personally feel very selective about who I choose to co-write with because. I mean, first of all, writing music for me feels like a deeply solitary activity. And so sharing that process with anyone feels like very intimate. And mm -hmm. I also feel like protective of my time a lot. So my measuring stick for like, is this a person I want to write with is like, do I feel moved by or excited? And it's really not like a specific is the song this way or sound like this? It's just like, what feeling do I have when I listen to or read mm. lyrics? And time and time again, Elaine will send me lyrics that I'm just like, this is what I needed in this exact moment. And I'm already feeling like all reading this. And it's like a spiritual, like, oh, I feel it in my stomach. So of course I want in on this. Like, I can't even believe I had any role in some of the songs we've written together because it just feels like the message that was sent to me from above. <laughs> Yeah, the universe. you guys are just thinking in the same way. That's so interesting. Yeah, it's like the same wavelength. Well, I have a question more just out of curiosity, but when it comes to writing a song, how similar or dissimilar is it to writing a poem or just like free write or? I, I mean, know. yeah, yeah. It's like there's definitely elements that are similar in write to writing a poem. Um, I think that I think the difference is like I mean, you don't necessarily have to think about melody when you're writing the poem, but you have to think about um, flow, cadence of mm -hmm. like how it's gonna, you know, are you writing it in like, you know, there once was a man from Kentucky, da 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 And that's gonna sing differently from like a haiku or like a free right. rhyme free kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, I'm sure you get this question a lot, but like, do you think of the music part first or have you ever had trouble like oh the lyrics just came to me but now musically I'm kind of like right like what sound matches it or do you guys so help think, each other a lot in that too maybe sorry I think we probably both have different answers to that one yeah what you do go you... first I'll go second so for me I I used to write lyrics first I used to be very like um folk singer songwriter in the way that I wrote and yeah, I would write lyrics first. And all that really mattered to me was that there was end rhymes <laughs> at the end of my my stuff and, you know, two verses in a chorus. And if I was lucky, maybe there was a bridge. But um, and then, yeah. And and I would often write with my guitar and and that would really kind of lock in how the sound was going to be. And then more recently, I've just started um, writing on my walks. Like I'll go for a walk and then I'll sing one line and then and then I'll kind of like, maybe I'll sing two lines with a melody and then I'll be like, yeah, I like that, that idea and that melody. I'm going to create a melody around this and then figure out the words. So the mm. one that Justina is going to present, I was just hanging out and, uh, uh, and it was just like, 
the, I have, I'm in a songwriting group where they give you a prompt every week mm. to write a song to. And the prompt was safe. And I was like, uh, I already wrote a song last week about I'm safe here. Like I feel safe. Mm. And so I was like, how can I use this word? Like in the song where it's not a song about safety. Right. And it's I was like, okay, right. So I was like, what's not safe. And I just was like, say, I don't want to be your safe bet. Don't want to be your plan B. And I was just like, I don't want to be a safe bet. Don't want to be a plan B. And then I was just like, da 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 da. And then that was the hook. And mm. and I started writing some other stuff around that. And then Justina finished that. Wow, yeah. that is so cool. <laughs> I kind of feel like I should just play that song now since you just introduced yep. it like that. Yep. Because <laughs> right. I, I yeah. love get, having people get in on the process and it feels yeah. appropriate. Is that okay? Yeah, Do go it. for it. Do it. Okay. Yeah, and if also, you want to like articulate the process as you do it, go for it too. And okay. and the way that I wrote the 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 safe bet thing, like it sounds like it's just a random thing, but then the rest of the time that I was writing it, I was kind of like trying to think of a scenario and then it just sort of happened to fit into Anyway, you can take it from there, Justina, but like it's not a meaningless song is what I'm trying to say. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it has been. Right. Meaning. Elaine was drawing from her own personal experiences and um and then she handed it over to me when I was like, this is resonating exactly with what is happening in my life right now. And I want to complete this song. So this happened yes, a couple of days ago. I don't know. Wow. I have no concept yeah. of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Can you hear everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Justine. Oh, yeah. No, mind. One thing I will say is on Zoom, if it says original sound, if you click original sound on, it's gonna be better for us. Is this better? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely got better when she did that. <laughs> okay. You call me up when you need me. Keep it sweet, then you leave me. I don't know where you go. I'm tired of making up stories Why I'm not feeling more ease Now I trust what I know Cause I don't wanna be a safe bet Don't wanna be a plan B Wanna be a top choice, not your top three Don't wanna leave the door crack Cause I need a clean break You don't have my back Hey, na 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 I'm so done, I'm so done Conventions never had ill intentions, you just straddle the fence. Isn't it so sad how you couldn't keep me, but you couldn't release me? So I'm leaving. Cause I don't wanna be a safe bet, don't wanna be a plan B, wanna be a top choice, not your top three. Don't wanna leave the door crack, cause I need a clean break, you don't have my back. Hey, ha na 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 na, I'm so done, I'm so done, yeah. Ha na 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 na, I'm so done. Picking up my pieces. Making me complete There's nothing really lost here Except you losing me I don't wanna be your safe bet Don't wanna be your plan B Wanna be your top choice, not your top three Don't wanna leave the door crack Cause I need a clean break You don't have my back, hey I don't wanna be your safe bet Don't wanna be your plan B Wanna be a top choice, not your top three. Don't wanna leave the door crack, cause I need a clean break. You don't have my back. Hey, ha na 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 na. I'm so done, I'm so done. Hey, ha na 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 na. I'm so done. <laughs> Love that it. was phenomenal. <laughs> that was amazing wow 
Wow, team. Wow. No team. Yeah, I can hear I can hear the drums coming in. I can yes. I, just at the very end. Yeah. You know, I just want to, yeah. Oh yeah. So, wow. Okay. How much of the song is created virtual or like across just meetings and stuff? I feel like the whole we thing. will only meet on Zoom to fine tune certain songs. Wow. No, I feel like 80 or 90% of our songs are Elaine sending me a song start, part of a song or something that I finish, right? Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And and I saw That's that so cool. like on your Instagram um like you guys have had well, I don't know if you guys piece that together or is that kind of recorded live um because it wouldn't be synced up. So you guys piece that together. Do you mean do you mean the one that she posted today, like the middle of no, nowhere one? I think I like Cuz I was back. we were in the same room for that one. Oh. <laughs> I feel like you were both wearing headphones. Um Oh, oh. I feel like it was a while beautiful, ago. right? Oh, that was yeah. like, there was a lot of like tech required for that. There was a lot of editing. <laughs> I know. I was like, <laughs> well, when Justina and I were in school, um, in school, I found like, I know. we're like 12, no, in college, um, you guys <laughs> were, were trying to do the um, co-writes or something with the, with USC, but like, that was like right. virtual <laughs> across it the country. It felt so foreign back then, the idea of collaborating with someone virtually and now it's like all I want to do like I don't <laughs> don't be here don't make me leave my room yeah you're like I'm exactly. comfy yeah you guys don't want to see what's happening below my shirt so. <laughs> no pants Monday exactly yeah, no one queen. needs to know no pants every day um <laughs> so question okay so let's say you guys are um a good pair and then I'm sure you guys co-write with other people too um but let's say you still like the person, but maybe this song didn't work out. Like, how would you deal with something like that if you still want to keep writing with a person, but maybe... Right. Just... Like, there's a Have you end. guys had, like, yeah, maybe, like, this one just didn't work, or has all have all of them just been, like, amazing? They've been all amazing. No. um, <laughs> We have, like, I don't know, 20 or more songs that we've written together, and I think it's basically the, the thing that is, like, okay, which one will we record next? And we kind of, like, vote. We, we can't we kind of just find the one that we're both most excited about mm. right. and then i think if there's a song in there that one of us really doesn't like we'll just keep on like kind of vetoing that one for something else right yeah. right right yeah i'm like which song is just stuck in my head the yeah. most and i feel like we're usually we don't disagree too much i think no that's good so mainly it's just really let's try all the songwriting um i mean let's try writing all the songs but only the top the cream of the crop will be right um so like you guys are compatible we are we totally are i think that we're also at the point in our our writing careers where i mean i think we're writing more great songs than we're writing mediocre songs yes and that and that feels like something that has been earned not just like it happened Mm -hmm. yeah so, I was listening to, like, Spotify the other day or, like, I don't know, somebody, it was, like, a playlist that was called, like, Underrated Songs or something. Somebody had added my song to Underrated Songs. And I was listening to these songs and, like, a lot of them were super good, except for there was just, like, one thing off. Like, there was just, like, one kind of awkward word. or there was some, And it just makes you realize, like, mm-hmm. the songs that are on the radio are, like, pretty near freaking perfect. Like, you have to, if you want to get on the radio or get, yeah, the song has to be, there has to be no flaws. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's more because of the production of the song or? There, no, the production was all really good on these ones. This was just like there was some slight awkwardness in the writing. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, the production definitely has to be top notch. Right, right. Yeah. So what are some of the things that um, you would say, like you said, you've gotten better or that, that now you're great at it. Um, what were some of the things that you learned along the way that's maybe it's not an initial like this is how you write a song but some of the things that you learn as you go from good to great? It's a really good question. Or like, mm. do you, are you just streamlining the process better or do you catch yourself quicker? Like, oh, that's a bad, that's not that great of a line. Like you already know. Yeah. For me, yeah. I think for me, my process has just gotten faster. Mm. Like earlier when I would write songs, I would, have like pages and pages and pages that I would then like 
move things around and cross things out mm. and just like squiggles everywhere. And now I think the squiggles happen in my head. Like I'll go through the same process where I'll think an idea, but I won't even write it down or bother to say it because mm. I know I see where it's going. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I think one thing I heard recently somewhere was, I don't remember some podcast was like, the way you can tell where your song is weak is where you explain yourself to somebody else. So if I'm like sending something to Justina and I was like, yeah, this is really cool. But like, there's like this funny little rhyme in the verse, but it's neat because it's, it's this, you know, like the fact that I feel like I have to like explain myself about why something is actually okay means like I'm arguing with myself on this and it's weak. So like wherever, wherever, like one thing I feel like I've learned over time is just like, usually when I write a song, there's a, there's one gem in there. Mm. And like my, my younger self would just be like super attached to the one gem and make excuses for the stuff that was mediocre around it and being like, yeah, but, the, ev- but it's going to, everyone's going to love it. Cause this one gem, <laughs> but then you realize like the, the best song, you, it needs to be like solid all around it. And you have to like, you don't have to throw the song away. You can keep the gem, but you have to like work around it to make it. Yeah. Awesome. It has to be good as a, as a whole, not like just because of this. Yeah. Well, has that ever been difficult where like you might've created a song that meant a lot to you, but maybe it didn't sound great or it wasn't complete or solid. So you had to like cut away at it. Like, or how was that? I feel like that would be so hard. (laughs) Yeah. I I mean, personally there, there are some, I have one song that I wrote called I'm not okay. (laughs) that I wrote when I was just having a time. And as I was writing it, I was like, yes, this is what I need. I'm getting out all my feelings. I'm talking about all of the pain in my heart and how everything sucks. And like, this is what the world needs right now. And then I came out of that feeling partially because of I got to write the song. I got to process it. Mm-hmm. And now looking back on it, I'm like, that was really just for myself. No one, like, I don't want anyone to hear that. No, <laughs> right. one, no one needs to hear that. That was like that journaling. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So for me, I think there there are some songs like as I'm writing now that I'm like, this is really just for me and I'm excited to get to the next one that I think will be medicine for other people, not just myself. Mm-hmm. It's probably healthy too to not be super involved in the entirety of the lyrics or the song in yeah. like an emotional way. Yeah, because then you can just view it as like a project complete, move mm-hmm. to the next one. <laughs> Right, but but co- I- co-writing is awesome for that too. If you mm. feel like it's incomplete, but you feel like there is one good thing in there, then you send your one good thing oh, to your co-writer. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Please fill in the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Okay, I, I think that's like a puzzle. That's cool. What were you gonna say, Justina? Oh, I was just I just super agree with what you were saying, Elaine, about like having to explain yourself. Like if someone doesn't get something, maybe you weren't giving it, and like, right. I think instead of the, justifying it. Right. So our songs can like stand on their own two feet without any preface. Just like, oh, this the news has been delivered. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> the <laughs> good news is here. <laughs> you can understand it as whatever message you want. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, team. I think we're going to take a quick break um, and we'll be back with some more fun tunes and more business questions also. Sasha and I have all the questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yay, team. And quick water break. Quick water Back. break.
All right, team. We are back at it again. Um, Pee break, water break, check. We're ready for you. We're, we're bringing more exciting details about the lives of songwriters and a songwriter pop duo, no less. Um, I love how I just put on a podcast voice. Podcast voice for that. Podcast, <laughs> podcast voice. A podcast oh voice. God. Oh my gosh! What if I had a podcast? podcast. You're a podcast. Oh my god. <laughs> <That's> adorable. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Um, yes, team. So we have Jelena here. Um, just got through some awesome songwriting related questions. We had a cool little performance. Um. And the song is stuck in my head. Thank so you. cute. Oh, know, let's great... hear you sing it. It's like the just like the little like bounce of it, you know? <laughs> there was a line that I like. Oh, I forgot the first part, but something, it's something, like, not my top three. Not yeah, my, top three. Not my top three. Uh-huh. Nice. Yes. <laughs> top three. And then come on tour with some us. Be our backup singers. <laughs> We're just gonna be there like this, just dancing. We'll be in the, the back. backup dancers. Yeah. <laughs> um. We'll so, train for it. We have um, definitely, gosh, I feel like I could ask them questions all day, um, but I won't do that to them. <laughs> um, so we have some businessy questions since we are also a business podcast. <laughs> um, so the reason I kind of really wanted to ask you guys or have you guys on this show, um, Sasha and I wanted to have you on the show, is because... Um, we talk about small businesses a lot being kind of just different kinds of schedules. I mean, um, we interviewed someone who makes her own earrings. So she's talking about like all the different aspects of that business. But I feel like the songwriter business as, as well as just being kind of an artist is very different, um, from your schedule and how you make money. Um, because I feel like even that is different from a regular freelance that, it's similar, but not really. <laughs> I feel like you almost put out a lot of feelers and wait for the return kind of thing. So just from your aspect, how is your day to day and um, what type of not the amounts, but like what type of places would you be making money from? Great. Great question. Um, yeah. So I. I think that we're just getting into this, the music licensing game. So we've both had our songs in ads, TV shows, and it's been very exciting. And I feel like that's also been probably the hardest part, Elaine, don't you think, getting the first one? Yeah, I mean, one hopes that it's just like, oh, and now the floodgates will open. Ta-da. Right. Yeah, Elaine and I had this like accountability check for a while um, of like sending five emails a week. And I know Elaine did that for a full year, sending at least sometimes way more than five emails a week out to music supervisors to try and make relationships and see like, is there a need for what we're writing? And if so, where is that need? Do you send samples with it? Um, or do you kind of make a connection first or? It depends. That's... Yeah. I mean, uh, the, it's like, it's a kind of a fine art, the art of the cold email. Um, uh, sometimes I would put a link in my signature um, and just like, reach out and uh, like talk to them about a project that they worked on that I thought was cool. It's definitely like all in the research of like mm. looking into who they are, what they're working on. Like, um, yeah. And I think we're kind of transitioning Well, I am at least transitioning away from focusing on cold emails to focusing on other methods of building relationships. Um, we're going to a conference on Thursday, the day after tomorrow, I'm flying down to LA and we're, going to a conference in Ventura that's like a three-day thing where there's 30 music supervisors and 30 musicians and we get to pitch our music we have, there's like six listening sessions where we pitch our music and then lots of time to like hang out at the bar and so hopefully you know we'll start some initial connections there or or kind of like reconnect with people we've sent some cold emails to there's one girl there for sure that I've like emailed back and forth with and that'll be cool to like have that um kind of circle Circ- back like to a, real yeah. real life um but then we're also we started this initiative called sync music for a change to like do our own listening sessions um where basically we get musicians to do activism and 
in exchange for that, they can submit a song to the listening session and then the supervisors volunteer their time. And so just being able to like yeah. reach out to a supervisor about something that's not like, hey, listen to my song, is kind of like a way of building a relationship with them that's like um, not so transactional, I guess. Right, right, yeah. Wow, that's so interesting. I knew you, okay, I'm gonna ask more about the um, sync music for a change in a second. Um, but well that aspect to me is so interesting just the sync licensing and um it's almost like sales so you're doing basically sales right. for yourself because <laughs> you're like yeah. reaching out to everybody um okay so let's say you get a bite and then they say yes um what happens next or like do you, are you still yeah, also like how do you on guys this? how do you guys also protect your songs or like your material like in that process of getting exposure or potentially like having access to other routes of like getting your music out there. Justina, you want to talk to that? Um, well, I know that it's sort of protocol to copyright songs. I haven't done that in the official sense. There is a paper trail though, or like mm. a record of when, so if like, if anyone were to ever steal the idea, it would be like, I'd have the email. This was written that, that on this time mm, okay. um and then as and then as far as like having um having more of a track of the song there's like a thing called pro's performing rights organizations where um you get to have like who is involved in writing the song like who the percentages of ownership like i wrote half the song and this person produced it and that's a way of tracking um how who gets payment if the song makes money if and right. when the song makes money mm -hmm. So there's wow. that as well. Do you think nowadays, because, um, you know, before CDs and then it's like touring, um, yes. do you think sync licensing, I mean, that's always existed, but because of all the streaming platforms and all that, do you think that's like kind of the main way to go or do you still think it's touring and live performance? Like, I mean, I think it really depends what your what your goals are, right? Um, I think I think like, Sync licensing is really cool, like as a method of distribution, like uh, basically like Justina can speak to this. Like she got this song put in in this show, Good Trouble. Have you seen that show? I have not, but I saw a post about it. and I kind of like really want to watch all it's of an it. Amazing, but... It's a really, really good show. <laughs> it's a like, great it's a show. Really Are they on like season three or something? Bingeable. Yeah. But like, yeah. So just like watch like a little bit with Justina's thing and then start from the beginning or don't but no, like watch, exactly watch all seasons. Do it. <laughs> you'll do it'll take you this weekend and you'll not do anything else because it's so like addictive yeah um <laughs> but yeah so like what was i oh yeah so like you got that song in good trouble and like i don't know how many streams you got on spotify but it was a lot more than any other song right thank you for bringing that up yes um yeah, I think some people heard the song in the show. It was a pretty, they used a big chunk of the song, like two of the three minutes of the song they used. Oh, wow. And um, on Shazam, I checked out Shazam. It seems like almost a thousand people heard that and Shazammed it um, and then went to listen to it on Spotify. And I've definitely had like at least seven times more listeners on that song as I do my other songs on Spotify. Wow. That's amazing. So it's like a slow, like a crawl, but like it's it's a good way to get exposure. Of course, I get the check. It's hanging up on my wall to be of like, course. this is possible. We can do yes. it. Yes. <laughs> so first of money. Do you get royalties on this um, like indefinitely? Indefinitely, yeah. As long as the show's playing. Right. Like, uh, as I mean, long as, as, long as the show's airing. Yeah. Right. Mm. Um, so, sorry, go. Well, this was just my little note to make them feel better is I am one of those people that Shazam songs off shows. <laughs> oh, I am all question. hardcore Shazam. Well, like, did you guys have to make sure your song was on Shazam in order for people to find it? Or like, do you have to make sure that it's accessible on all these platforms before it goes on the show? Well, that's There's, something you can have yeah. s set up in your distribution service. So both Elaine and I use a distribution service called DistroKid. And that sort of handles all of the, like, sends it off to Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. You get to decide if it sends it to Shazam. It's a small fee to have that happen. Yeah. Um, and it's sort of, you can cover all your bases through there. Wow. So basically the short form of it is you get in contact, um, you know, you get it placed on the show. 
you get monies. Now you're going to go on to the next one. So the first one is the hardest. Would you keep contact with Hope that? So. Sa- right. Hopefully. <laughs> um, it, would you keep contact with that um, supervisor or, um, you know, your contact for that placement? Or would you probably have a new contact for the, another one, but they're going to be spreading the word now for you or, like your, a or your name is just out more like what would kind of be the next a second time? How would that happen? I feel like the sync world is a pretty small world, okay. wouldn't you say, Elaine? Yeah, I mean, just looking at this attendees of this conference, like even in our little group, we know, yeah. We, so we're still early. We're still new to the game. We're kind of like one yeah. year in, year and a half in. So um, that's great, though. But yeah, basically, the way that you get you get connected is either directly through the music supervisor or through a sync agency, or a publicist, or a label, um, and so both of us have our songs represented by a couple different sync agencies. Mm. And then we're also like on the hustle to meet music supervisors ourselves. So like, I guess like the person who placed Justina's song, like now is aware of who she is. And so Justina could probably reach out to her, although that song was placed through an agency, Mm. but Justina could probably like connect with that music supervisor and send her more stuff. And interesting. Mm -hmm. What a crazy world. What a crazy world. And so on the, like, on the side of creating albums, which I know, Elaine, you've created some, like, back in the day, people back bought in the CDs. Yeah. But <laughs> today, you could just stream an album. I guess, like, financially, what are the key differences in those two, I guess, just like um, purchasing a CD versus streaming or downloading it or whatever? Yeah, you- there's a big difference. So, but, like... <laughs> I lived on, like, I moved here to the, to the Bay Area four years ago. And before that, I lived on Maui for, like, seven years. And I played four nights a week at hotels. Like, at, like that was my living. I played wow. hotels and restaurants. And I had I had created, like, my first full-length album, super well-produced, whatever, and was able to sell it for 10 to $20, depending on how I was feeling, how chancy I was feeling that day, what price I wanted to put on it, because it was new tourists every time. I didn't have to keep my price consistent. But I sold a 1,000 of those albums, like, while I was living there. Um, awesome. I didn't know that. So, That's great. So just like, yeah, it was like a thousand people at least with my hard poppy CD That's that they played so in their cool. car. And so that was like a thousand times 10 is $10,000, right? So like that it doesn't happen anymore. Right. Like, right. Yeah. <laughs> so like it used to be that, yeah, you could tour and like, I would go to a show, I would play a show in Canada and they, I don't know, they pay me 150, $200 for the show. And then I could make like another hundred bucks selling CDs, mm-hmm. which is like a really big deal for one night right. of a show. Right. But now when you're on tour, like you have to sell like a t-shirt or you have to sell something else. Yeah. It's Basically, almost like the merch yeah. is really <laughs> where you're right. it's a huge hit. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what about you, Justina? thoughts any thoughts on anything um or even back to your schedule as well which was the original question (laughs) (laughs) my schedule yeah I mean I have also released albums mostly EPs I think um and have also dared to try and sell them the physical copies it has felt like a an undertaking so now it's just like they're relics of the past in the closet that I get to dig up right you know for fun to be like look what I have I made a cd I'm this <laughs> they're old be, they're gonna be vintage just wait till we're like 90 yeah. they're gonna be like amazing <laughs> artifacts yeah people are gonna be walking around with cd players again but guess who still has a six disc changer in her car because my girl. car is prehistoric <laughs> <laughs> guess wow. who's listening to some old school <laughs> cds right now um insane ours. celebrity <laughs> ours are all we have left yes um that's true do you guys like the changing the changing landscape of like the music industry or are you kind of like eh, i guess i'll join in or like i, I guess I, I, yeah now. justina if i'm talking too much just butt in okay um i i think that there's always a lot of talk about like, oh, the music industry is this way and it used to be that way, yada, yada. Um, I really think that it mostly matters for people who own major record labels in terms of how much money anyone is getting. Because mm-hmm. those are the people who make all, a lot of the money all the time. 
And so like for somebody like me, like pre-internet times, like my career would have ended like two years into it because there's yeah. like it's so hard to book a tour without the internet like it's mm, so hard to like right. do anything as an independent artist without the internet and so like the internet has made it so that like music can be basically consumed for free like recorded music but it's also meant that you can actually like get people to hear your music and go on tour yeah yeah that's my what do you think justina yeah i i agree with that i I've always also wanted to have my music in movies. Like from a little girl, I would watch Disney movies and pretend to be a Disney princess and be like, one day I want to write a song to be in one of these movies. She's and like, my democracy song is going to be an independence day. <laughs> <laughs> to make this a good, strong country. That was the Ooh, I love it. Is that it? <laughs> that was it. That Amazing. was my eight-year-old oh my first God. real song. I want to hear more of it. <laughs> I'll sing it to you later when I'm less Oh my God, you're going to, one day, you're going to get a children's choir to like sing that together. <laughs> Snapping. Like for a presidential campaign, you know? You just have it in a musical. There's, yeah, there's going to be a, a hip hop remix of it. Like The huge flag drops oh in the my back. God. It'll be <laughs> my childhood <laughs> dream. I could then quit my career after that. <laughs> yeah. Cheerleaders. Yeah, yeah so... Yeah, so that was like the dream from very early on. And that dream, as you know, like you go to school and people tell you to be realistic and that you have the dream beaten out of you. And then that dream surfaced again after college when I was like, oh, what am I going to do with my life? Oh, yeah, this there's this thing that I've been wanting to do. And then around that time was when I saw um, the ad for this course that we both took. Mm. And it was just like divine timing. And I'm like, all right, this is this is meant to be. So yeah, and in that sense, I feel like um, I don't have as much of a pull to do touring and stuff like that, although I still have a desire to do that. But my biggest pull right now is to just like keep writing and to have that stuff be in TV, be in movies. Mm -hmm. And that is what we're doing now. So it does really feel like living the dream. So I'm happy yeah. with where the industry is right now. Right. That's awesome. And yeah. that kind of, I was also going to ask you guys, like, as artists, talented artists, what has been probably like the top obstacles you've had like like you mentioned like you went through school or you know people were like you can't be a singer like that doesn't make money like all those things um I guess You've what were it. yeah how how did you guys overcome that or how did you guys decide like no this is what I'm going to commit to as my career and life or can I tag to that too has it changed your mind like do you view now the music industry differently so that you can present yourself in a way where you can pursue it like as your career mm. rather than like i'm just writing it's a dream right right, right. yeah or is it still a dream? i'm just still hoping american idol will pick me up you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny because i auditioned for american idol last week did you really no. <laughs> cut off just you know really I, well i was just at the age cut off so i figured this is my last chance i can do it i might as well do it <laughs> i just awesome. sent i sent in a video to their website I'm like what the hell i'm gonna be oh my gosh look at that listen keep an eye that out that is team. amazing we knew yeah. her when <laughs> uh, that's right yeah but i mean the the voices of of skepticism and judgment have been loud I think for both of us mm -hmm. and in high school I was taking piano lessons and my piano teacher laughed at me when I told her I was applying to go to music school because she was like you can't even read music and I was like fair point <laughs> <laughs> okay um, and she was like this is this probably isn't your calling like you, you should probably oh, wow. fo focus on oh, you, you really yeah. care about government I was like in the debate club and was interning for city council and wanted to be a lawyer Dude. so there is a oh. lot of a lot of like i'm going to smush myself into this box that people think i should be smushed smushed into and we're, just we're going to show her justina oh we already are but we're, we are going to continue to show her for sure i mean there i've I mean, what I feel right now in my soul is that people will give you advice just based on what they know. And so there's just so many people who know um, disappointment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> who know disappointment in their own lives for their own dreams. So I don't want to take advice from anyone who isn't living like their most outrageous dreams. So I'm yeah. not, really not taking advice from many people. 
because <laughs> yeah. we're going going for the gold. So, well, and I think it's like our truth is our truth. Like no one else knows it or can speak to it or anything. So it's almost like, I mean, I think it's also advice. like like, you know how you're saying like Elaine, you were in emailing five emails a week. You guys had like a goal of that. That to me is almost like you're viewing it. Yes, there's a, definitely a huge creative aspect to it, but you're presenting yourself in not just like, oh, we we like play music or we write songs because I do feel though the other side of it and how the music industry gets that representation or reputation is there are a lot of people that just want to play, which is fine, but there is a component to it where you do have to make money. There is a lot of effort put into it and there could be incorrect effort that makes you no money and you justify that as the correct way and it's not. <laughs> so I guess there is a way to view it as, you know, it's possible to make your passion your career, which has a money component to it. <laughs> yeah. Or that you're not, I mean, yes, you know, maybe you're writing songs till 3 a.m., but it's not like, oh, I work till 7 a.m. and make zero money. Like if you're working till 7 a.m., at least make some money, people. <laughs> Yeah, like, you're gonna be doing that like <laughs> um. for sure it's it's always it's like I think the biggest the biggest struggle is like is is the like yeah is money like being an artist of any kind it's really difficult to make art that you find authentic and make money at the same mm -hmm. time and yeah. I think I think that's what's exciting about sync is that there's this like opportunity for us to potentially do that but we both have our side hustles you know like yeah. Justina teaches and I and plays gigs and I play gigs for weddings and events um yeah like and that's like my main my main hustle has been mm -hmm. event and event and wedding gigs for like a long time now um but yeah I like I guess it there is a certain component of like you know like you might make you might make a lot of money with your art and you might not and mm -hmm. you have to be like Okay. You have to love your art enough to be okay with, like, maybe not either outcome, money. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And just have the like, I guess, moral courage to. I mean, America. I'm Canadian, so America is particularly like money centric, and people very much look down on people who don't have money. Like, it's very much a, a perceived as like you're worth what you're worth. Like, even if people don't say that out loud, there's this perception of like people who have more money are better people. Somehow, God mm. likes the more kind of vibe. Yeah. Um, and you know, I just don't subscribe to that right. mentality. And I think, I think to be a happy human, you kind of have to like find your own like decide for yourself what you value and what you what is important to you to have a happy life mm -hmm. um like whether or not you're an artist yeah I mean I, I remember like speaking to somebody when I was in my early 20s who was like I don't know she was in her 50s or something was like at a Christmas party or something and she was kind of grilling me about what, what I was doing with my life and oh I was a musician and what what, what was I going to do and mm -hmm. what was I you know and I remember just being having this moment of like oh well what like what do you do um and she said you know oh, I work at the bank and I was like oh and do you like your job and she was like well no I'm, I'm thinking about you know trying to find something else and and I was like well what are you what are you thinking about doing and she's like you know I'm just still trying to figure it out <laughs> you know yeah. I just realizing like the people like everyone a lot of people are still trying to figure it out yeah. like the the people who like kind of position themselves in your life as like having it all together nobody has it all together right yeah you know no right one. amen sister friend you guys should write a song about that <laughs> they you probably should. have <laughs> i know your secret you yeah. should have your shit together <laughs> I'm glad this is recorded. That's the start of our next co <laughs> uh, Very <Yeah>. interesting. <laughs> uh, so you guys um, definitely have a lot of things going on. And it's very crazy that you're even able to handle so many things. I mean, to me, that is even like more amazing that you're staying so creative and writing all of this stuff. But then you also have your other things. You have your gigs, your teaching, like... Do, do you find it hard to balance that sometimes? Maybe yeah. even mental compartmentalizing. <laughs> like creative. Yeah. I have a lot of lists. Yeah. <laughs> Elaine is very organized. Yes. Yeah. We, are yeah. we are grateful. We are grateful. 
<laughs> Justina's like, I'm still learning. <laughs> I truly am. I have not resigned to the fact that I'm a chaotic person. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Wait, we're going to be big here Look, a second. Oh, I oh, love it. Oh, that is. Yes. I've yeah. never seen that. I am the same. <laughs> she yeah. really is. But I, I rely on lists so that they don't take up space in my mind. And yeah. I feel like it's it's just a game changer. Like, I just don't have to think about it yeah. ever. <laughs> so I see it <laughs> on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. It is definitely, um, I feel like it's very common nowadays to just be doing so many things. And to do them well, though, congrats. <laughs> Um, so really quick, just a last note here, at least for me is, um, so you're doing sync music for a change and did you guys start that together? Um, and yeah, how do you like reach out to people or have you gotten a lot of submissions? Can I do the first part and then you finish? Okay. So the first part is Elaine and I have a thread on Marco Polo, which is like a video chatting app. You just like send videos and watch them whenever you can. And she sent me a video like, hey, we're both into activism. Like we've, you know, we're super, we have our places in that work. And we've, um, we've always like struggled with bringing in some kind of like giving back into what often feels like a self-serving pursuit of like my music. I want to like, you mm -hmm. know, climb the ladder. And Take so, over. yeah. So Elaine was like, I have this idea to like have listening sessions and bring in music supervisors and like, it will help other musicians get feedback and it will help us make friends with music supervisors and people will write their senators. So we're like, you know, moving the the needle, the, the needle a yeah. little bit in, in the direction of, like, yeah. you know, positive change. And I think I don't even know if I had a chance to respond back to you and be like, yeah, I love this idea. Then Elaine comes back and she's like, hey, so I just like I made us a website. Like, I don't know if you're still down, but like, oh, my God, website. I love it. So, so like, Elaine is running. Sasha. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and Justina's cat Leia. <laughs> we had just like the most beautiful website with everything laid out. And I was like, all right, we're, we're doing this. Okay. So it's literally our relationship too. It's all it takes. You can see it's a website and then you're legit, you know? Yeah, just do it. Whip and something we up on Wix or Squarespace and you're good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, team. We got, a few, we got a few minutes left. I don't know if Elaine wants to grace us with anything. Great. Okay, okay, okay. Yay. And we got here. some uh, closing announcements at the end. Okay. We are. There's right. one chord in this song that I don't have. I think it might be a B. Let's see if I can. So it's. No. Okay, we're going to go with eight. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. It makes it feel better. You feel better. You wrote it, so no one will know. I wrote it. No one will know it except for Justina. <laughs> Justina, every anytime you it sounds off, make a make be like. <laughs> okay. I'm Happy just, to. Just go like. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. This one's called Golden. <laughs> and, My favorite um, song of ours. Yeah. My heart is an alchemist, turning pain into peace. Melting shame into sweetness, sweet release. And I am a witness to the places that tell the deepest of stories coming up to be held. It's golden being home again. It's golden I was home. Good. 
laughter, the feel of connecting to life, the warmth everlasting, and everything will be all right this time. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. The bridge oh, got a bit wobbly. It was beautiful. a suspension bridge. It's okay. The, suspen <laughs> the suspense was there. <laughs> wow. Both of your voices are just amazing. I know. Oh, my gosh. Wait yeah. till you hear them together. Yeah, yeah I know. I was like, the whole time. I was like, I could hear the harmonies coming in here if it weren't for the stupid lag, but okay. Justina's, Justina's not like, oh, thank you. She's like, yeah, wait till you hear them together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Confidence, beauty, grace, bold, courage. Yes. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, thank you so much, team. Um, so this is Jelena. You guys do have a, a single coming out soon. June 25th. 25th. June 25th. And then we have a music video coming out shortly thereafter that does have an inflatable unicorn, so you won't want to miss it. Oh I feel like, why does that sound so normal coming out of your mouth? <laughs> Just like... <laughs> It is. Uh, so I spend my time with unicorns. Um, yes, yeah, super awesome. Please go listen to them on Spotify. Follow them on Instagram. Um, and watch do you them. Wanna do, a, do you want to do a sneak preview of Already All Right in the outro? Could we? Do, yeah. I, if they if they let me share screen, I can share yes. sound and yes, and I we can just do job. that. Would like, be so cool to give them far, a taste. How far right. should I go to? We've got three minutes. Does that make me unrelatable from do it like the beginning the of the chorus do it. through the first chorus? Yeah, do like a like thirty seconds to a minute. Okay, we'll g I'll I'll go on and we'll be like you'll you let me know. Okay, ah! share sound. Let me see advanced. No, no Let's one has it. ever heard this except us. Oh my gosh, I just got oh, so excited. Wow. Is it? Am I sharing my screen too? I guess I'll just. You share have to share your too. screen. Oh no. Oh okay. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. Tell me if you can hear it once it plays. I see a lot of tabs. Do you want us huh. to see the tabs? There's a lot of, it's okay. You don't yeah. have to share your screen if it's just audio. I don't do coffee. I do tea, decaffeinated. Does that make me unrelatable? I can be sensitive, but I'm also courageous. I get hurt, but I can take it. Cry it off and go again. My body knows the score. I don't believe in this culture anymore. Cause I'm already young. heard it before it's i like, i can amazing. see that on this like okay this girl just got broken up with on a netflix show right and she's getting dressed right. for a new date <laughs> oh yeah i'm already all right montage <laughs> <laughs> yes. i love it we have less than a minute you guys are amazing yes true artists thanks love for having, having us thank you yes thank you for all the amazing answers and entertaining us and we can't wait for the single on the 25th and the music video. Yes. For anyone who's watching, if you're considering music as a career, watch this. Do it. You can do anything you want to do. Um, and we can't wait to hear what you guys More. do next. Yeah. Yes. We're so excited for you. All right, team. Peace Thank out. You. Bye. Thank you both. Bye. Bye.